Everybody wants to beat misogyny. True. Everybody wants to beat misogyny. <laughs> Everybody wants to beat misogyny. E, e, e. Look out for yourself. Misogyny. E, e, e. Does Umi C1 mean anything now with extra Hydro app? I desperately need Farazon. Uh, we, we can talk about this really quickly. So, while donning the ceremonial garment created by whatever, the final normal attack will unleash a swimming fish to deal 30% of her max HP. Now, when you are talent level 9, realistically, if you're going for C1, you're, you might actually get talent level 10. Um, your normal attacks deal 8.7% max HP. Um, from, from this. Uh, there's also the equivalent of, like, another 1 point something-ish percent max HP if you were to convert the damage that you get from the attack scaling into how much it would be in terms of HP scaling. And we can use that to get work with things that are, like, rounder and easier to work with. So let's just say that you're getting the equivalent of about 10% max HP per attack. So what that does, that C1, is it makes it so that when you end 3, it doubles the talent damage that you did. Which is actually kind of nice. It's, it's fairly reasonable. The main, like, potential issue with this is that it's not actually doubling because N3 is not Kokomi's optimal combo. You generally want to N2 walk or N2 dash. So you're getting a little bit less than that. And... Arguably a lot more importantly, Clam Set exists. So a lot of your damage is not coming from your talents themselves, but it, but it's coming from your Clam Set. Kokumi's the, the emote is proved that Kokumi got Doom posted? No. It was just funny. <laughs> Barbara greater than Kokumi, true or not? Okay, here's the thing about that, alright? Kokumi is better than Barbara. However, people way underestimate Barbara to this day. And I will gladly lie and say that Barbara is better than Kokomi just to get people to think about Barbara again. There is a lot of, like, if you're thinking of going for Kokomi in a Nilo team, there is actually a lot of situations where she won't even actually be an upgrade over Barbara. There are situations where Barbara can be better because Barbara has no particle production, bad uptime, and bad hydro application. Her hydro application is not actually worse than Kokomi. Uh, in Nilo teams, her uptime is 100%. And in Nilo teams, you don't actually need particle generation for your Hydro. Ooh, you're not going to get your Nilo burst back. Oh, golly gosh, darn it. I guess all your damage is gone. But yeah, because in Nilo teams, you want your Barbara on Sack Frog. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks, true. But you want her on Sack Frog, so you don't actually have E uptime issues. Because Sack Frog is the best choice for her for the main for the substat that it has. Oh, Shiver Me Timbers, true. Now, I remember when Kogumi came out, I compared her to Barbara because I thought I thought the same thing at the time. That people were sleeping on Barbara. And a lot of people would end up going for Kogumi. And just benching her because they didn't realize that it wasn't actually solving an a problem that they had. And so I remember I used Kogumi's release to talk about Barbara a lot. Is there even a scenario? Or is there ever a scenario where you'd use both Barbara and Kokomi in a Nilo slash Nahida team? Um, not really. She's never better than Kogumi either. She definitely is better than Kogumi against mobile enemies and Nilo teams. Yeah, man, Kogumi's release was such a fucking nightmare. There was so much fucking misinformation. People saying that she power crept child because she was better than than him in, in Changling teams. People saying that she was useless because she couldn't crit. It was so bad, man. And I was just there trying to fucking balance addressing the overhyped misinformation and the underhyped misinformation being like aware man aware 
Why does no one play Razor anymore? I don't think you're in the right stream. <laughs> Razor is like... Probably my most played on fielder right now. No, my most played unit, because I obviously play Sing Toe more than I play Razor, because I play Sing Toe every time I play Razor, but I also play Sing Toe when I don't play Razor. But in terms of, like, on-fielder, in terms of, like, the team that I play the most often, it's probably a Razor team. Why don't people play Razor as a physical carry? Um, because he's not very good. His actual, like, DPS is pretty similar to Ellen. Even a little bit worse. But he doesn't have any of the, I guess, workarounds that she has that can make her still a viable choice uh, against certain certain types of enemies. She does, he doesn't have a way to front load his damage. He doesn't have a way to, like, cheat out more damage by resetting. He doesn't, like, he just, he's just not very good. I do think he's actually good in Nendro teams, though. Even in TCG, I always use him with Chongyun, spam reaction with element, normal attack, and burst is the way. True. Can you play not physical Razor without Ben at C6? I mean, you can. Like, you can just play Hyper Bloom Razor. But if you're doing that, Razor is not better than the other Electro units you could be using. If that's what you're doing, you're kind of just playing a worse version of Sino. And that's not going to be great. You can still clear because Dendro Reaction floor is really high. But it's not, like, something that he's good at. It's just something that he can do, I guess. Right, so... If you've played Breath of the Wild, you see this and you're like... What the fuck, man? Why is there just... A straight-up Bokoblin camp in this game. Because Hilly Trolls do share a lot of, like, surface-level similarities with Bokoblins. A locked chest in the middle of an enemy camp with barrels that look like that is also very reminiscent of the kind of overworld things that you'd find in Breath of the Wild. Like, they chose this shot for a reason. There's a lot of things in Genshin that don't look like Breath of the Wild. This fucking does. Click. Showcases exploration mechanics. Cool. Wow. You can use skills to block enemy attacks? That's so cool! You can yeet enemies? You can summon birds? You can become birds? You can climb big ass mountains? A cultural refer- this is- is this a China reference? They're gay! Sorry. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Oh my god, I'm so confused. Wait, what? What is this? Wait, what? There's bosses? Oh my! You can play with other people? You can fly? <laughs> Rivali's Gale! Woohoo! Early advertising for Genshin showcased basically every element of the game except the gacha. It implied that there would be co-op difficult bosses that you'd have to do with your friends without ever actually saying it so that they wouldn't actually have to commit to it. It showcased some of its actual good, like, cultural inspirations and really cool places. 
it showcases a lot of combat things that you can do even a lot of them a lot of the things that are not actually useful because of the way that the combat is actually designed and they showcase parts of the exploration that are basically just copy pasted from breath of the wild and like don't get me wrong that's not necessarily wow plagiarism and all that it's just the, the point i'm getting at is like it, it's completely fine to take inspiration from other games for your games it's not like morally bad having overworld enemies in a, an enemy camp with a chest if you kill them and some barrels that you can use that's fine like that's just a kind of a default video game thing but aesthetically it looks a lot like breath of the wild and they chose this shot for a reason they chose this part of the map for a reason they wanted to appeal to breath of the wild players the same way that tower of fantasy sponsored basically every single fucking genshin impact uh, creator because they wanted to market themselves as an off-brand Genshin Impact. Tower of Fantasy players would get angry when you'd say that it's just an off-brand Genshin Impact, not understanding that that's what the company wants. They want people to think of it as an off-brand Genshin, so that when Genshin's out of content, they go and play Tower of Fantasy. That's why they advertised towards the Genshin audience. They didn't actually think that Tower of Fantasy would kill Genshin, but they were very happy that that was discourse that was going around because they wanted people to think of Tower of Fantasy in the same thought as they think about Genshin. In the early days, Genshin was marketing itself towards non-gacha players. They wanted to bring in players who were not used to gacha mechanics before. They wanted to establish themselves to a new audience now that they've done that they're using the popularity of their game to try to funnel genshin players into their other games they're making an incredibly dead genshin patch with like barely any new characters for like a lot for a pretty long time while also sponsoring their content creators basically all of their content creators to play star rail because they want to leech off of their own audience they want to take all of those Western players that, I, that are not used to gacha game shitty predatory tactics and give them, give them a little nudge towards their other gacha games. I'm sure there's a lot of people in chat for whom Honkai Star Rail is their second gacha game. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people in chat for whom Zenless Zone Zero will be their third gacha game.